First up tonight, an entrepreneur who thinks he has the power to electrify the den with a product that promises to save both energy and money. But being environmentally friendly doesn't always guarantee the green stuff from the dragons. Hi, good day to you all. Have you ever walked into a room and found that lights are left on, TVs, games consoles, or, you know, a, a charger? This used to happen to me regularly. I have four children. I would walk into the bedroom and it would be lit up like Blackpool Illuminations. Um, I was getting frustrated looking at my energy bills, which were always rising, and I was getting frustrated moaning at the kids all the time to turn things off. So having the kind of entrepreneurial mindset, I found myself sat down and the answer was staring at me from the corner of the room. It was a home alarm occupancy sensor. Um, I used my engineering background and sensor and wireless communications background to take that and turn it into something that would switch off lights and appliances automatically. Okay, so um, three years later, lots of blood, sweat and tears, I now have this uh, shiny gadget you see before you called the Energy Egg. Um, the Energy Egg is available with uh, major high street retailers. Um, it retails at 39.99 um, and it can save you 60 pounds in your electric bills over the course of a year in a living room. Um, let me show you how easy it is to use. You take it out the box, you put the battery in the back of it, you press the button and it will sync up with the, the, the purpose-built um, control adapters. So here you've got a control adapter, you've got a power strip and you've got a light switch. So it will control all of these to switch off your lights and appliances. You put it down beside your TV and that's it. It will start saving you money. You um, walk into a room, the lights will automatically switch on. You walk out of a room and the lights and appliances will automatically switch off. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present to you today. I'd be happy to take any questions that you have. An energising pitch from Brian O'Reilly from Glasgow. He wants £50,000 for just 8% of his business, selling his energy-saving devices. But Peter Jones wants less of the sales patter and more of the practicalities of his key product. I don't think you've even explained this product at all. You haven't shown us how it works. You haven't shown us how it's installed. You haven't shown us how it would work in an average house. Yeah. You've okay. got to get back to basics for your pitch. OK. Show um, us the, how, how right. does it work. Absolutely. You've got a control adapter there or this control adapter here. The first time you plug it in... So I get a control adapter with the yeah, egg? Yeah, with the egg. OK, so that's in John Lewis just now. If you went into John Lewis... Let, let's stop for the advertising piece. Sorry. Just get on with the explanation. Right, OK. Plug it in. Uh -huh. So you plug it in and then the first time you press the button, it will synchronise with the socket. Uh, uh, Trust me, it is very simple to set up. Anyone can do it. I apologise that I didn't... No, everybody can do it, but if they have the plug socket to plug in the wall, yep. they change their light switch, yep. and no doubt when you want to go to a four or five gang, you've got another product you've got to buy. We did it based on customer feedback. So some of the feedback that we had was that, well, what do I do with my Sky Plus box, for example? Um, because I want to keep that on all the time. So we developed a power strip. It's got two permanently on sockets, and it's got four wirelessly controlled sockets. Plus, we are, we've got a product roadmap where we're building um, Wi-Fi technology into the energy egg. I've actually got a demo of a phone app with me just now. And effectively, you just you press the buttons and it will through your home Wi-Fi network, send a signal to the, the different... Um, so that's the, the lights on and off. And you could do that with the, the appliances so, th well. so this egg and those devices today work with that app? Um, not, that, not, that, not that egg. Well, I knew you'd say that. So to get the next egg to work uh -huh. with that app, yeah. what does that need? More money? We could have a working energy egg um, ready for the, the, the market by, with about £15,000. I mean, I don't know, it, it's, it's very simple. That's what I like about it. Piers Linney has discovered a component of Brian's business that could fit neatly into his cloud computing portfolio. 
Now, Duncan Bannatyne wants to focus his energies on the company's finances. Did you say you're selling this at the moment in John Lewis? Yes, I did. I know in Tesco Direct. So what's your financial turnover in the last year, then? Um, 33,000. And what, what's your gross profit and net profit? Um, it was 7,000 for our um, net, and our gross was minus 120. You lost 120... It's all the way around, but you lost 120,000 pounds? Yes. Yeah. What's your projection for the year going ahead if you don't get an investment? Um, 200,000. Turnover? Yes. So how are you funding all these losses? Um, we've, we've got investors just now. All oh, right. How many investors have you got? Who owns the company? Let's do that. OK, I've, I own 40% of the company, and there are um, nine shareholders, six investors. Right, and how much have they put in? Or, or, sorry, what percentage are they on? Um, well, I own 40, so they, they own the other 60%. So if you keep losing money the way you're losing money, yeah. when do you run out of money? Um, we run out of money in about four months' time. So you're really in big trouble then? Yes. Are your investors want to put more money in? Yes. So you're not in big trouble then? You're only in big trouble if you run out of money and there's nobody who wants to put more money in. OK, yeah, yeah. But you, fair, will you put point. more money in or, or have you, are you skint? I'm skint. So they will take a bigger share? Um, potentially, yes. Yeah, I think you're in a lot of trouble then, Brian. Not good for the inventor, as Duncan Bannatyne detects some major cracks in Energy Egg's balance sheet. And Kelly Hoppen is underwhelmed by the company's struggling sales. I think you've kind of missed the boat slightly because you obviously have created something that is, is incredibly useful, saves energy, but um, the product is in John Lewis and is not really making sales, you know, and that is a great platform for you to start selling in. I would buy one of those, but it's not something that I think I would invest in. For that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you. Kelly Hoppen has no instinct to invest and makes an abrupt exit from the deal. Can Piers Linney uncover a brighter future for the company? So what's your forecast next year? Um, 1.2 million. And have you got any orders to show you can get from 200k this year to 1.2 million next year? I th I'm confident that we'll have an order, a purchase order value of £80,000 in about a month's time. That's one order? Yep. Um, I'm confident that we will have a, a, agreed with a, a large facilities management company, another order for £60,000. Um, I like it, but you've got a big problem in your business structure. To get me involved in a business that at 8% and to really get my attention, that ain't going to happen. But you've now embedded a structure in your organisation that doesn't allow somebody like me to own enough of a chunk of the business mm -hmm. to really give it what it needs. If you don't mind me asking, Deborah, what kind of shareholding did you have in mind that you... I would certainly be looking at something beyond 25%. Uh, if, if you took on 25% of the business, um, then I would, be, uh, I would be sitting at around, I think, 20 24, 25, 26 percent I would end up owning. I need my well, no, capitalisation table. Right, you said, okay, 30, how, how much more money do you need? About £100,000. Right. So double that. So, Deborah, we might, well, I might invest and give you, ask for 30 percent. Uh -huh. Your other investors are going to put a similar amount of money in. Yeah. That's now 60 percent. You're then down to something with a two in front of it. Uh -huh. So, will you get out of bed in the morning with the same? Are you making... Focus. Did you interrupt me to make the very same point I was making, Piers? I'm just checking. No, because... no, Because if you did, no, you've you kind <clears throat> of broken my flow of conversation. It'd be a lot easier right, okay. for me if I could just have a conversation yeah. and follow that conversation. Just one half a million. It and makes it really difficult. Answer Piers' question. Um, yeah. Yes, I would still get out of bed in the morning. All right, absolutely. OK, guys. Um, you're... Sorry. <laughs> I'm out. The den's crackling with tension as the dragon's squabbling results in a sharp exit from Deborah Meaden. Could the lights be about to go out on Brian's pitch? Duncan Bannatyne is next to decide. Deborah's right, you know, if she offers you 25%, you dilute it to 30%, so you'll have less shareholding than some of your investors. And that actually doesn't actually help 
when you go to bed in the morning, you've got to go up and drive to work and go and you're on a bad day. And, and, and I think that's the major problem. Um, I think if I invested, your shield would come down that low, you'd leave and I'd end up having to run the business or find someone else to run it. So I'm afraid I'm out. Another dragon declined the opportunity to invest. Has Peter Jones heard anything to give him a change of heart? So, Brian, um, I, I have been a bit... I don't think I... I don't feel like I'm grumpy. You are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's because I got a bit frustrated, because I think you're incredibly credible. I think you've taken investment to build a product. Your biggest problem is that you've fallen into a, what I would say a mid-market trap. You need to, for me, differentiate to a whole bigger degree than just this egg. You need to have a home solution or a home kit, which I think would work for you. Uh -huh. But it's not something that I would like to invest in because for 50,000, you need another 400,000. And then maybe you've got a chance of making it. So, Brian, I'm going to wish you all the very best of luck, but I'm out. Thank you. Peter Jones has declared his hand, leaving Piers Linney the last dragon standing. Can he see a way around the thorny issue of that complicated share structure? So you're asking an investor, me to give you some money today, negotiate a deal with the other investors to keep you interested, yeah. and they're not here. So the, the, the existing investors have, have given me a kind of uh, a, some bandwidth in terms of you know, negotiating. Yes, yeah, so, OK, sure. would, if I said to you, I'll give you £50,000, I want 30% of the company, but it's all coming off your existing investors, so you stay where you are, would they agree to that? Potentially. But they're not here, are they? They're not. Right, I'll take a punt with you. So, this is an offer, but it's got a, a big caveat. So, I'll give you £50,000, all the money, for 30% of the business, yeah. but it's coming off the other investors, that's it. And if you can't agree that with them, once you've left the den, uh -huh. then there is no deal. OK. Yeah, 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 that's... I, I'll take that back to okay. the investors, Good. and I'm quite Good confident luck. that <laughs> Thank you, Pierce. A handshake, an agreement, and light at the end of the tunnel for the entrepreneur, who leaves the den with a promising business proposition. I was particularly interested in Pierce because I knew that he was involved in cloud computing. I believe that Pierce has the background and the knowledge to really help us progress as a business and develop our product roadmap. 